congratulations. you got to love it. Uh, Red Velvet Car comes out and has a, a, a pretty strong debut. I know. We debuted number 10 on Billboard. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, you know, when you narrow that down to some of the rock charts, it was actually number three. Oh, really? Yeah, there's always a different way of looking at things. Well, geez. I like that chart. What's it like when you're releasing a CD and, and now is a, a world of instant results, but you still got to wait a little bit to see, you know, mm-hmm. is anyone going to buy this thing? Well, I think that's an ongoing, you know, vigil that we'll be having and see how it goes over Christmas and all that stuff. I'm just so super happy, though, whether or not it sells well, just that it's on the map and people know it's there. And since people do like it, I hope they'll pick it up, you know, and and have it in their in their lives because it's a good one we're really really proud of it and just couldn't be happier that people know it's there you were here not too long ago playing in virginia beach uh-huh have you ever had on the road memory loss you know one of those moments where you say <laughs> you know cleveland good night and you're not in cleveland <laughs> no i have to be honest i mean it is such a blur out there because you go town 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 maybe three in a row a night off somewhere or or riding through the night on a bus, and then town, town, off, town, 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 off. So there's a few times where you're like, where am I? (laughs) Okay, okay, look look on the wall, it's posted. You know, you have to to keep track, because it's too embarrassing even to your own self if you're one of those people that goes, whatever, man, maybe I'm in Cleveland, maybe I'm not. Where are you right now? I'm in California right now, preparing for a yoga class. Yoga class? Oh, yes. nice. See, I'm trying to give our listeners a visual of what you're doing I'm at this do very moment hiking here. I'm going to up a nice trail, and then I'm going to do some yoga for three hours. Well, you have a much more fulfilling day than the rest of us do. Well, I have to stay strong for my real job. <laughs> <laughs> And my children, of course. There you go. Well, I'm looking at some of the songs on Red Velvet Car, your new CD, and I see one that's uh, WTF. Um, Were you a little apprehensive to name a song uh, with uh, those letters? (laughs) It was, it was, oh, there's my dog, Charlie. The dog, Charlie, needs to go out as well. I'll just let him out. That was a funny, a funny title because the way it happened, because me and Ann and our guitar player, Craig, was writing, we're writing it together up in Seattle. And uh, and we didn't have a title for a while, so Ann just called it WTF, just as a temporary title, which, of course, we couldn't let go of it later because it was just, it made us laugh every time. And now the kids, you know, the kids are like, because my boys are twin 10-year-old boys, and they're like, oh, their eyebrows and their eyes get really big. It's like, oh, what does that stand for? <laughs> what does WTF mean? Because, of course, they know. Yeah. But we try to watch the language, and so it's, we say stuff like, where's the fish? You know, World Taekwondo Federation. <laughs> <laughs> and then we all kind of have a, you know, like have the little the little twinkle in the grin, the grin. I was looking at VH1's list of 100 Greatest Women of Rock. <clears throat> okay. Right. They have you at number 40, okay, which I, I think is really a surprise to me, but... Uh, even more surprising, some of the people they have ahead of you, like Patsy Klein, Dolly Parton, Bjork. Don't you feel that you might have contributed oh. a little bit more to the world of rock than Bjork? <laughs> well, I think, excuse me, I think that Bjork was a real inventor, though. She invented a whole genre uh, before it was there. Ordinarily, in rock and roll, there's not that many women. There's, I think we invented something, too. But, you know, we don't usually make it out make it on to those lists at all <laughs> i guess perhaps we're not from new york we're not really from la so you know we're kind of like different we have our own category we're not, we don't really fit into anyone's category think about this back when you were a kid you had to play air guitar now there's some kids out there <laughs> who are actually playing some of your songs on guitar hero that must be pretty cool it's so cool I, you know Guitar Hero, a lot of people have a big attitude about that stuff. If you're a musician, you kind of turn your nose up at it because it's not the real deal. But I'll tell you, with me and my boys at home, we've gotten into playing the Beatles rock band stuff. And now they have all this um, intimate knowledge of Beatles songs that I couldn't manage to somehow fit into their chaotic lives Mm -hmm. before then. So to me, you know... Guitar Hero and Beatles uh, rock band, just a wonderful gift. 
to the family, to the living room, to the American living room, to the global living room. It brings people together. Well, it, it really does celebrate yeah. music and, and probably yeah. uh, inspires a few more to actually pick up a real guitar, if you think about yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard of a lot of kids that went from that because they felt the thrill of performing. Put in these words in a, a search, let's say Google or what have you. Nancy <clears throat> Wilson divorce. You get 3.1 million results. I mean, it's got to be difficult when your personal life becomes a press release. It does, and there's just no easy way for it to happen, you know. In my, you know, I think the statement that we officially made was the right one because we're our friends and we are collaborators and, you know, we always will love our children and be really good parents, co-parents. But it's a sad thing and I know a lot of people feel sad about it because we, we were sort of pedestalized a bit, even though a lot of people didn't know we were even married. It's a sad, sad thing and almost 30 years later especially. Well, that's why we have yoga, to try to center ourselves that's again, right? right? That's right. Well, that's correct. I only got about a minute or two here. Mm-hmm. I, got a, I got a couple of quickies. These are kind of like uh, bullet questions for you, okay? Okay. All right. All right, Nancy Wilson, you or Anne, who's a better cook? Ooh, we're both really good cooks, and we're different. I think Anne's a better cook. Very generous of you, okay. Who's better at remembering birthdays and anniversaries? I am better at remembering birthdays and anniversaries. There you go. Okay. Uh, Who takes longer to get out of the dressing room? You mean to get ready for the show? Yeah. We are synchronized to a T. We get ready exactly the same amount of time. (laughs) Definitely sisters. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. What TV show are you absolutely hooked on if if you even have a chance to watch? Mad Men. Uh, What would Nancy Wilson from today tell her young self from back in the mid-70s? Oh, a good question. (laughs) It was like, uh, you know, turn back now. (laughs) Uh, I think it would be something about don't become a girlfriend of the guys in the band, which, of course, was a mistake. You know, I would warn myself about a few mistakes. Don't take drugs and don't drink too much alcohol and do not start smoking because all of those things you have to get rid of later. It's really hard to do it. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's uh, good advice to yourself, your younger self. Well, Nancy, uh, best of luck with Red Velvet Car. It was a pleasure to speak with you. You too, very much so.